This week on the Knitworthy Podcast, Knitting and Spinning, Brianne does interpretive dance to my poetic masterpiece, Ode to Sleep. Yes, surprising dinner conversation. I'm going to share a few of my latest artistic efforts. Yay! Uh, Yeah! (laughs) We'll be talking about a new social venue that we'll be adding to our show lineup called Periscope. And we'll have some contest information. All this and more on this episode of the Knitworthy Podcast. Yay! Hello and welcome to the Knitworthy Podcast. How are how are you, Mom? You know, I'm doing great. Yeah. I had four hours sleep last night. <laughs> She's really not doing great. She's pretending. She's acting, people. I am. You know what? What? I have a strong desire to read my poetry. Right now? Don't you think they want to hear my poetry? (laughs) Who doesn't? Well, you know what? First, though, before we do your poetry, can we explain what these are? Well, we may be tethered to our phone now. (laughs) So we we are investing in the podcast Mm -hmm. by... uh, getting a few things to hopefully improve the quality of it. So, not that it's Not that it's needed, but I thought it was time to take it up a notch. We're ramping things up for you people. <laughs> but apparently our lapel mics, which are new, are a little short-corded, <laughs> and so they're suspended in midair. I'll have yes. to get some sort of an extension for... We'll have to see if we can find something like that, uh-huh. because not that it's not a good look. <laughs> But you know, it's how I want to be with you all the time. I know. <laughs> it's true. I do. Yeah. Yeah. I know, right? Sweetie, this is just where you should be. <laughs> you got to cut the cord sometime, right? Like literally Don't cut, cut the cord. Don't cut this cord, though. No. Mm. Um, and then also, what's yeah. the other thing that you purchased? Well, I really thought... And by we, I mean you. <laughs> well, lighting's always an issue, and I thought it's time to put on my big girl pants and... I decided I would start investing in one light at a time Good so plan. I could work it into the budget, whatever that is. And $2, $2 a month is what our budget is. Exactly. <laughs> it's a high budget podcast. Oh, yeah. So I had a light that was supposed to be here by now. Uh-huh. And it was um, just a soft box light, it's called. I have no Ooh. idea what that means, but apparently real podcasters use things like that. So I thought it'd be good to fill and get some of the shadows gone, but sorry, it did not arrive. It was supposed to arrive already. I know it, and I had a little message that said it was here. It's not here. You kind of noticed because it's, it's supposed to be like a big box. Yeah. So we would have noticed if there was a big box sitting at it, our front door. That would have been a big, big box of a light for the podcast and hay for the bunny. Two things which automatically go together in my head. Paired forever. Yeah. Hay and lights, of course. Yeah. She was ta- she was telling me to get a certain type of hay for the bunny. She was, it was Timothy Hay. Uh-huh. And I was like, who's Timothy Hay? <laughs> Why did I know him? Like, I thought Hay was somebody's last name, which it probably is. If you were a farmer like me, with an, my one bunny. An urban farmer? I'm an urban farmer. You are an urban farmer. I'm such an urban farmer that poor Bunny, when I let him out for the first time here at this new house, when I have a, a little bit of a fenced yard uh-huh. and I can watch him and there's no treatment on the grass, he hightailed it back inside and ran back into the John Deere room. We keep lights on for him so he's not in the dark or anything, but no, he wanted nothing to do with it. He's like, what kind of a terrible place <laughs> is this? Where have you put me? Yeah. Please. <laughs> Oh, goodness. Know, right? Yes. So now, would you like to read us your poetry? Well, you know, the, the, the sleep issue is an ongoing saga. And I, I just, this morning, for some reason, I felt like putting pen to paper mm. and really pouring out my feelings on yeah. paper about yeah. sleep. Sometimes you just have to. Sometimes. So... Here it is. Because I know, you know, I should really consider posting it on the podcast, on the um, website. Yeah. Because I'm sure they're all going to want to read it to their families and probably frame it. Frame it, Mm -hmm. embroider it on a pillow of some sort. I could see all of you miming this poem. 
right oh. now. Right? Did you want me to do the interpretive dance? Would that you? Goes, yes. Hold on. Let me, let me do these Don't, two processes. Haven't you missed Brianne's dancing? I sure have. If you haven't been mm -hmm. around for a while, you've missed some really yeah. good dancing. Okay. Okay. It's called An Ode to Sleep. You flirted with me all night, you cheeky little thing. <laughs> Your sweet little whispers were so faint I could scarcely make them out. I searched for you first on one side and then on the other. I searched the refrigerator for you and even searched my phone. You were not there. I knitted my love for you in garter stitch and mitered square. Still you refused to meet me. <laughs> this is gonna be funny to only me. <laughs> I had such high hopes for you. I thought our lifetime together was enough. Our history, our bond, our relationship. I thought it was enough for you. But it wasn't. I once called you my beloved, but now I know you are just a floosie. I hear standing ovations to you. Yeah, I mean, between uh, putting together art in such a way, between the written word and the like, the mime. You know, the, the dance of there is going such along. inspiration happening out there. Yes. Where it really counts. And perhaps <sighs> we should explain what a floosie is because we do have people that maybe have never seen Jack Black. Oh, and in know, Nacho Libre. In Nacho Libre. Oh, yes. What is a floosie, Brianne? <laughs> Spell it. F-L-O-O-S. I.E. is how he pronounced it. Yes, it's like a floosy. He's a floosy. Yes. He, well, no. She was she, a floosy. She was a floosy. Yes. In, mm -hmm. my, in my poem, though, sleep is a floosy. Yes. What is a floosy? Someone who is unfaithful. She just spreads it around town. She doesn't care. She's not faithful. <laughs> That's probably bad, wasn't it? <laughs> wow. You took that to the her, whole level. I meant her love. Okay. Where is your mind? I clean it up, girlfriend. Well, all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, and a share that goes along with the poem. My cute little um, paper clips I made. So cute. You two can make these paper clips. All you do is take a paper clip and a length of ribbon of your choice. I used seam binding that I had on hand. Uh -huh. Two buttons that are. Um, these are my mother of pearl uh, vintage buttons that's getting blown by my fan because yes I am hormonal <laughs> and I just tied them with a little length of ribbon on either side and went through the middle of the paper clip and it, it connected it and it makes it adorable for finding a spot that you want to return to here is the beautiful poem written in school pencil of course because Hello. that's how I roll Anyway, hey, that was for free. You could make a bunch of those for Christmas gifts. Ties in. Yeah. Sweet. <laughs> because we do have a contest about knitting and doing things for holidays. That's right. So, I mean, you know what? This is just bonus material all over the place here. Oh, man. Right. Left and right and right and left. <laughs> I'm sensing you are still reliving my beautiful ode. I am. Mm -hmm. Where? Okay. Where is sleep? Where is she? Not here in this room, I can tell you. <laughs> I did look for her. Oh, man. She's not there. No. I don't know. I would challenge some of you to mime and interpretive dance the poem and just really send it to me because yeah, I'll, I'll look at it in the middle of the night and it'll bring me such joy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. How so, do we recover from that? I have no idea. <laughs> talk about, we're going to get right to business and we're talk about meet. knitting. Oh, we're not, no messing around for us. Straight no. to the meat. New format, people. <laughs> we're all about the new format. Okay. So why don't you tell me, what are you wearing today that is knitted? Oh, yeah. We restarted, didn't we? <laughs> we did. This would be start number two for those of you who just caught that. Because I forgot I had the brand new 
lapel leashes, is what I like to call them. <laughs> Oh man, I'm wearing um, some socks that I knit. Uh, I'm thinking they might be Lorna's laces, I'm not sure. Okay. That's what I'm remembering. And I'll put the picture in here. And I love it. You know, the color blends with fall. Mm -hmm. They're so cozy. Yeah. And we talked about, before we talked about uh -huh. the interesting toe construction. Yes, and I don't know what the name of it is. You know, in, in our break, I could have looked that up, but no. <laughs> Just guess what I'm talking about. I did a toe that I'd heard about, and oh, I'm trying to remember. It may have been Don Wolf. Okay. Who had from Wolf Farms? Who had talked about it, perhaps. But anyway, the idea is that you knit a rectangle. It's kind of along the principle of how you would do a garter tab shawl, where you start with a garter rectangle. Mm -hmm. And then the shawl springs out from there. If you've mm -hmm. ever done one of those, it's that concept, but in a sock. And so you are uh, creating a rectangle that is going to fit over your toes. Okay. And you need to make sure, obviously, that you end up with the same amount of stitches that you're planning your sock to be. Mm -hmm. I don't remember how many stitches this one was, but you're going to want to make socks for you. Well, wait a minute. Maybe they do want to make socks for me. <laughs> If I can remember how many socks I need, how many stitches for a sock, I shall put it here. And feel free to make me socks anytime. <laughs> is that shameless self-promotion? I think that is. It's the epitome of shameless self-promotion. It really is. Yeah. That's okay. Okay. So anyway, it was a fun toe. I have not done it again. Mm -hmm. Not because I didn't like it. Um, I don't think it's the prettiest toe, but it's in your shoe. I mean, you know, I wear toed shoes. So um, I care more about my heels because they wear clogs. Mm. And so the heels show. And, uh, oh, someone's going out Periscope. Um, we're gonna talk about Periscope later, stay tuned. Um, anyway, I uh, think that the garter uh, start off of that, the garter tab part or the garter rectangle is a sturdy toe for someone who is rough on socks, mm. which it's me. Mm. Okay. So that's what I'm wearing. How about you? I'm wearing my Weigh It shawl that I made out of daisy knits, and I'll talk about that in my finished objects okay. section. That sounds great. Yeah. It's gorgeous on you. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. So, so yeah. What, are, what have you been working on? You know, my working on list is diverse. The knitting part of it is rather slim. Um, so I'll, I have two items. Whoa. Right? Hold your oh, horses, people. One. But I did end up finishing my skein of yarn that was from Diamond Bee Sheep Ranch in Arkansas. Look at how sparkly that is. The lovely Lori Brown. And this is, I, you know, t for lack of a better word, to me it's a sparkly black cherry color. It, it is gorgeous. But it was not without trouble. I, you know, it was, it's a, it is, um, a thin yarn. I, I'm hoping it's fingering weight. I think it is. But honestly, the last bit of it, I just tossed my single, my singles, and gave up on it. The reason being, this is a long wool, and I haven't done a lot of long wool spinning. Okay. And I was trying to spin so thin, I wanted to do a Navajo ply, which is putting three plies together and you're chaining them like you would crochet, but without a hook. If you crochet, that will make sense to you. And the problem was, is with the long wools, you have to have a lot of twist in them in order for them to hang together. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the singles was so thin that I ended up having places where it was pigtailing on itself and mm -hmm. I'd have to stop and undo it. And um, so it was just becoming more frustration. I could have finished it out, but I was having problems in only in my plying. It wasn't in the spinning of it. Really? But in the plying of it was where the problem was. Now, I wonder, and this is what I'm thinking, that if I do it again, a long wool as a very thin singles, that I think I'm gonna do it as a three ply, a traditional three ply with three bobbins that are being brought together. Mm. And see if that is, is less problematic for me than trying to do Navajo ply. Okay. Because I think that the action of me um, pulling the, the loop of the singles through the through mm -hmm. is creating a situation where I'm getting those pigtails and I have to stop 
and untangle it. But I saw you had some breaking issues too. Do you think it was like too much strain on the single? I think that's where it got thin. Yeah. And I didn't have enough holding it together or I didn't have enough twist. Okay. And I'm not sure which. And that's part of what you learn in, in trying a new fiber. Sure. There's nothing wrong with this fiber. It is so pretty as you can see. Gorgeous. And I still got enough yardage to do something. I could add another color with it and mm -hmm. um, and do some sort of color work shawl, which would be really pretty. Do you know about approximately how much yardage you have? You know, I did not, I just took it off of the drying rack, so I haven't counted it oh, okay. after after drying. I mean, typically, the only way you're gonna know is after you wash and dry it, it shrinks a little, and then if you reskein it, you can count the rotations on your skein winder and know how much you have Got it. but i have not done that yet and i don't know that it matters to me i think i'm upwards of 300 when i do my initial count i got mm -hmm. to 300 and i say i'm fine with that because yeah it's enough yardage for me sure so well that's exciting worked on that yeah and um why don't you share what you're working on? i have this, they don't hear me and get tired of my voice let's hear your lovely <laughs> voice <laughs> Okay. Sorry, you're right in the middle of something. No, it's you? fine. Um, I just, it's it's funny to me cause, because, um, you know, growing up, people got our voices confused so often <laughs> that That's it true. cracks me up. Even John. Yeah. He would wasn't sure who he was talking to. Yeah, especially on the phone. Uh -huh. um, and so it just cracks me up that, you know, you were like, people are going to be tired of hearing my voice. Let's, let's hear from Brianne. I think my voice has aged, though. Yeah. I think it's gotten a little more, you know, scratchy. You still have the beautiful, lilty, soft voice that you want to hear all the time. I might just write down, hey, I'll have you read the ode to <laughs> sleep <laughs> poem next time. I don't know. I think that the scratchy, you know, tired, exhausted voice is really the one that pulls off that ode better it than my voice. It added texture to the poem, didn't it? It really did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just it's like, like a beautiful painting. Like layers, layers. you know? And mm -hmm. then you added layers, and then they're going to add layers, because I'm sure someone's going to mine it. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Um, so the things that I'm working on... Um, I have some things that I've that I'm knitting and some things that I finished, so I'm very excited to have finished objects this week. Um, so I have cast on. Sit down. Hold hold on to something. I have cast on another sock head hat. I'll give you a second to let that sink in. Has it sunk in? Yeah. Say so, it again because I was distracted by in a very important email I got or message I got from Gabby. Gabby. Gab, who is Gabby Knits. Okay. Um, so I have cast on a new sock head hat. I, I, wait. What? I know. Oh my. So <laughs> unexpected. <laughs> Acting. That's right. Um, I had the vapors. <laughs> yes. Um, so I was inspired by the last sock head hat that I made, which was for Evans, my five-year-old uh, son's kindergarten teacher, and I used some leftover yarns uh, that really wants to fall. I need to hold on to it. Um, so I made one out of, like it had a gray brim and then a purplish, pinkish, um, rest of it that's the technical term it's a, for it it's a heathered look and it was gorgeous yes it was beautiful mm -hmm. so i dug into my uh sock remainder stash that i we have and i picked out this brown which is what i used to make brian's sock had had a, out of i love that chocolate color isn't it's so it pretty gorgeous? yes and then um this is some Wilmiza that uh, very I fall used. colored. Uh, yeah, Don't I you used, love it. I do. I used this probably like four years ago to make some socks for my sister Heather, and so uh, I remember very specifically knitting these at your old house. Did you? Yes, Aww. and like a long time ago. Uh huh. And so I thought that two of these together would make a really beautiful hat. Um, so that's what I'm doing. I have about an inch 
that I've knitted on. See, it wants to fall. Don't fall. Can we hold it for you? Yes, please. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, I have about an inch that I've knitted on this hat so far, so I'm just kind of getting started on it. It's not hard for them to see how gorgeous it is. Let's get closer. Is that helpful, people? <laughs> It's I just, think it's lovely. It's a beautiful tonal, a beautiful tonal brown, and then I, um, I know that. <laughs> <laughs> and then this color of Wolmiza is Spice Market, and the lovely Tammy of uh, the proverbial knitter gave this to me. I can't even tell you how many years ago as a Christmas present. And she is Darth Knitter. She is Darth Knitter. Yes, on Ravelry and on social media you can find her as Darth Knitter. Hey all of you, can you give her a shout out? I'm trying to convince her to come on and do a do a be our guest. She yeah. does a lot of really fun things. She so does. I'd love to share Tammy with you. Absolutely. Um another thing that I'm knitting is I'm knitting on yeah. in keeping in with the, you know, fall themed yes. things. I have these. I've claimed these, by the way. <laughs> she hasn't agreed, but I keep trying. You can keep on trying. I have these uh, beautiful autumn rainbow socks that I started uh, about a month ago. I've gotten a whole lot done on them, as you can see. Um, and once again, the charcoal, the charcoal, the chocolate brown. Yes theme mm -hmm. oranges mm -hmm. like golden yellow color the teal which which makes it happy looking yeah and, and all of the green reds even pink right yeah there's just, it's a very diverse color way and i think it's just beautiful so um you told me something about them though what are you loving knitting on them um it's not my favorite thing to knit on right now and why is that um i don't it's something about the yarn I don't know what it is. The feel of it or the fabric that it's making. I think it's the feel. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's not making, It's the fabric is fine. Yeah, it's, it's gonna be a great sock. It is gonna be a great sock. Um, I'm just not quite sure what it is about the yarn that mm. is some, not my favorite. Uh -huh. um, but I really, I'm gonna love, I'm gonna love the finished product, but. I know I will. <laughs> But, uh, you know, for some reason, I'm just not really yeah. enjoying the process of knitting them so much. Um, but that's okay. They're just kind of living, living in my purse, hanging out there. Um, and I get to knit on them on occasion uh, when I'm waiting for something or, you know, I pull them out here and there to, to work on them. The last thing that I've been knitting on... Um, you know, I started the Kalimna shawl uh -huh. for Heather, which is a pattern that she had picked out uh, for her Christmas present. And I have the yarn that I bought and while well, we were in Virginia right. and a beautiful Malabrigo sock. And I have been working on these, on this shawl for four months and I had a four by four inch square done. <laughs> That wasn't seeing a whole lot of love, was it? No. And I love the Kalimna pattern, so please don't get me wrong. And there's nothing wrong with it. I just really was having a hard time knitting it. My brain was just mm -hmm. not there, and I was not enjoying it, and I had to force myself to work on it. And even then, I would get a couple rows done and just be like, oh, I'm all mm -hmm. done with this. Sometimes it's it's just where our head is at the time. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's how busy we are. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes you're just not feeling it, and that's okay. Yeah. So I have the pattern. I'll probably end up making it later and, you know, making it for Heather later okay. because she loves it. But what I decided to do was to rip it out, which was very painful for the people in the salon when I did it. They were like, why are you doing that? And I was like, because I can't stand this. And so uh, I started a normal Lintu for Heather. Um, and as you can see, it's a lot bigger than yeah. <laughs> four by yes, four. There's a lot more love there. Four by four. Um, I have actually uh, got to the point now where 
I'm uh, able to start the first lace pattern. Mm -hmm. And Can I show so, them closely? Yes, please. There is a beautiful plum undertone that's that I don't know. Maybe you can see it there, that kind of heathered plum color that's coming through a little bit. It is gorgeous. Very understated, but you know, we all need those scarves that are mm -hmm. um, a good accent for many different outfits. Yes. I, mean, and I, I think, can't wear this with every outfit. No, but I think that this is really going to be mm -hmm. one of those uh, shawls because it has uh, the plum, it has a little bit of yellow, a little bit of orange and purple and green and I'm, I mean there's blue in it as well mm -hmm. um, but it's all very muted and understated mm -hmm. and I think that that's going to make it really versatile. But so, it's, a, it's a warmer look than just a standard gray shawl like a, like a, a solid gray shawl would oh, be yeah. or something that you would other cons always also consider to be a um, a basic yes. or a classic look. I think I think it's a an incredible yarn. Um, let me hold that up so you can see. Okay, there we go. Oh, gorgeous. And that's the Piedras colorway from Malabrigo in the sock base. And um, it's just, it's a multifaceted yarn. The color is multifaceted. It's not it's not boring at all and it makes it so fun to knit with yeah so i'm really really enjoying it i love the normal and two pattern it is a free pattern i believe uh on ravelry i probably should have checked that before i said it if you are all about pay, generalizations if here. you have to pay for it i'm sorry uh but um it's a excellent pattern i knitted it up finished it one in august and you know here it is October and I'm already knitting a second one if that tells you anything it does so I'm really enjoying it so I want to hear what else you've that's great been working on well I did put some rows on the Multnomah oh yeah that you got me started on yeah it is seeming to be a little bit like the other shawl you're talking about where I do a few rows and then it's like okay I need to do something else mm. and there's no reason for it <laughs> we're taking care of my mom's dog today so I'm trying to keep an eye on him his name is Nearly. Yes. What is that from? Do we you know? It's from Harry Potter. Is it? From the uh, the ghost Nearly Headless Nick. Okay. That it was makes named, more sense. named by my cousin Ashley. Okay, that's cute. Peepa, not so much into Harry Potter. No. And we all go Nearly. People always say, why is it named Nearly? I don't know. I and no we idea. go... We should really come up with a great story for it. Yeah. Just imaginary story. He was he was in the pound and oh. on his way <gasps> to being He was nearly put down. extinguished. Yes. And we saved him from the from the brinks of death. Uh huh. Boy, we sound good in that story. Yeah we, we do. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. we come out good. We do. We're saving that story. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I am, I wanted to make sure I shared this beautiful bag. It's so pretty. Made by Sherry Knits. And it is chock full. It has two projects in it. It's that full. Mm -hmm. And look at the gorgeous lining to it. Mm -hmm. And it does have a cute little um, zipper pull with a fob on it. I've decided all of my bags are going to get some sort of a fancy pull added to it and if they, even if they have one I'm going to add one to it yeah I just think embellishment is what I'm all about Linda embellishment Stony Brook Lee <laughs> my name is getting longer it is getting longer wow it does have a handle here too so you can tuck it on your arm but what I was thinking was you know I have so much yarn in my stash what all sorts of things that I have practiced when I was spinning and um, you know it's not all I really enjoyed the mitered square blanket that was done in sock yarn. Yeah. Loved that, and I was really this close to starting another. Were you? Uh-huh. Not like we, you know, are running short on yarn for you to do that with. Right. I do have yarn for that. I loved doing Alish's little um, small toy-sized oh, blanket yeah. so much, and I thought maybe I could do a big one. But I thought really the, the sock yarns are not taking up much room, but what is taking up a lot of room are... In your stash? Yes, in my stash. Mm. It's taking up a lot of space is my is some of my hand spuns. I also have a lot of fiber to spin that I have no 
plan for. It was practice fiber, things to learn new techniques on, things like that. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, I'm just going to spin it up in um, chunky weights and see what I can do with it. And I decided to do a mitered square blanket, but I'm giving it a twist. Ooh. Nearly. I was, you know what I thought that was? The tree, the spider that's trapped in your window that you need, <laughs> dad needs to exterminate? No, I thought you had beans. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> okay, this is a thick and thin um, done. I don't even remember who made it. I got it for felt for a, a felted project. I don't know. At that time, I thought, hey, why don't I felt something that's thick and thin? You know, most rational people wouldn't choose that, but I, I'm a, I'm a rebel. And this is some yarn that I spun. It was a new fiber I wanted to try. Um, I don't even remember what it was. I was processing it and learning how to do it all for myself. Uh huh. And so it's this gorgeous kind of gray, a little hint of uh, a dark gray, light gray, and some chocolatey. A little. Well, I don't know if it's so much chocolate. And so I'm using those. Would you mind nearly clipping and I'm getting narrowly over here? He sees somebody or a leaf. Who said that? I don't know which. Two mics. This is what I'm talking. <laughs> all me, all the time. So what I decided to do, but I wanted to do a little bit more of an ant artistic take on. I'm not saying that mitered square blankets aren't artistic. I think they are. But I wanted the freedom to just work it as I felt it, kind of like when you're exploring painting or um, drawing those kinds of things, you're supposed to just try things and see what happens and be more experimental. And you know, so many times we take a pattern and we're just gonna stick to that pattern and not vary it, or we might pick a different color. But I wanted to see what happens if I just see, how do I feel like knitting this square? So I started, uh, let's see, where was the start point? It was here. This was the very first point of the square. This is some yarn that Peggy dyed and she made me a scarf out of it and gave me the rest of it. So that's what this is. This is the hand spun and this is that thick and thin yarn I was going to use for felting. And I've done, uh, what I did was I worked up and then I turned it the other way and I started working that direction. So the idea is I'm, going to, I'm starting from the center and I'm working my way out, placing squares where I see fit. I don't even know what shape I'm going for until I get into this more. Okay. And I just wanted an interesting use of color and see where it goes. Now, obviously it's much quicker when you're doing it in this big chunky yarn. Yeah. And so I think it's gonna be really fun. I'm having fun with it. This has gotten a lot more love than some other things. So I am going to just keep painting with, um, with color and fiber and texture. And I'm gonna spin up some yarns uh, specifically for this that is um, out of my stash of fleeces that I need to finish. Mm -hmm. And I think it'll be really fun. It's gonna be, it's gonna be nice and warm because it is a chunky. And uh, I'd love to just have a big blanket to curl up in that is all hand spun I've done or different things that mean something to me. And That's a good idea. And not feel con constrained to have all my lines line up. I have some of these miters, as you can see. Let's see, how do I show this? Can you hold up that side? Mm -hmm. Okay, so over here, you'll see I've got, see I've got some lines going up. And now I have, I'm gonna have a, a little series of lines that are do, going this direction, just because I'm liking how it's creating these little arrows of color that are going different directions. So I'm just, I'm not gonna let the yarn boss me around. I'm just gonna do whatever I want with it. Yeah. And what does it hurt if I don't like it? Psh, I, it can still cover up with it. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna say I despise that square. I am not going to use it. You shall not keep me warm, <laughs> square. Yes, now perhaps we want to give you back your microphone. Okay. So I do enjoy being double, oh, I think I just gave you mine. We definitely need longer strings. <laughs> this is fine. I don't know what you're talking about. Yes, yeah, so that's um, that's really what I worked on this week. I worked on a little bit every day. Um, I tried to stay consistent with that. I did have a few days where I didn't get to it, but mm -hmm. um, you know, making progress a little bit at a time, like many of you do. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. Okay.
Excellent. Did you have any purchases this week? I have finished objects. Yeah, finished. Oh, yeah, finished objects. Yes. Let's do that. Okay, so the first thing that I have, of course, is what I'm wearing, which is my Way It shawl. And I'm going to... Hey, hey, hey. Be nice, everybody. For those of you who dislike all the dog noise. Sorry. This is going to be interesting holding it up. Uh, oh, man. He needs to go outside. He's wet. Okay. So, <laughs> this is huge. And I it is, like, way bigger than my wingspan, even. I can't. This is the middle right here. Okay, so you can see. Stay here, stay here. Stay here. No, Hucky, Sophie, they're not obeying. <laughs> Here's, it's in the middle of my chest. And here is this side right here. And they're still, you can see, it's quite large. Um, this is just going to be really a cozy, wear it around the house wrap it around myself during the winter time kind of uh shawl i really love it it's here you have to feel it's just so squishy oh my goodness and wonderful it's polworth and silk i was saying it is from so daisy knits say, it's so super drapey do you see how that's just like wanting to collapse as opposed to my you know chunky wool mm -hmm. that sticks like a brick you know it's like a yeah cover. it'll be softer once it's washed but oh my goodness this is like already gorgeous yeah so I'm super excited it's, it's from uh, Daisy Knits on Etsy and I will link to her in the shop and just like I shall link to everything that we have uh, that we have uh, talked about today so there's that uh, what else have I finished Don't I know. finished the hats the preemie hats you did i did i made six of them <gasps> so gorgeous out of this this is Sirdar snuggly crofter baby feral effect dk that i got in virginia and i used two skeins of yarn uh to make these hats and i made hats of varying sizes as so you can cute. see these ones are a little bit smaller than these ones but you know there are all kinds of uh mm -hmm. sizes of babies in the NICU. And so when we go up to St. Louis Children's Hospital in November for Owen's uh, oncology checkup, then I'll take these up with me and drop them off. And uh, last month in September, I dropped off all of mom's preemie stuff. Yay. And they were so excited, so happy, and especially happy that they had already been washed. Oh, good. Because that's something that they have to make sure to do beforehand. Mm -hmm. And mom had even um, individually packaged everything um, so to make sure that they stayed clean and that they were ready for babies. Yay. So they were very excited. And I'm, I'm going to be happy to drop these off as well. So, That's wonderful. And I'm happy to have this done. I've been working on them since June. Considering I can finish one, like, in the course of two evenings in bed right before I go to sleep. I don't understand why it took me six months to get them done. But you finished. Let's just I celebrate that you finished. finished. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. So, hooray. Um, and then the last thing that I knit is I made... <gasps> A barley hat for my Owen. Yay! And it's yeah. black, so it's you know kind of hard to show off. But it, this is the barley hat by Tin Can Knits, which is a free pattern. I do know that for sure. Uh, a free pattern that uh, you can find on Ravelry, and uh, I just knit this out of some Cascade 220 that I had in my stash. It's actually the oldest stash that I have in my possession and um i purchased this yarn i want to say in 2009 so it's been marinating for it. quite a while good for you thank you um owen's very excited he's decided his new favorite color is black so me too i was like okay I love black. Yeah. So mm -hmm. given, given I gave the boys the chance to pick out their uh -huh. yarn and, you know, that they would get to have for their hats. And, and Evan wanted the green and Owen wanted the black. And I'm like, awesome. Yes, that worked out. Yes. So I made the uh, 
I have notes for this in my Ravelry project page. So if you want to know what size I made and what modifications I made, then you can see on there. Um, I made it shorter. I think I made the adult large size, but I didn't make it long enough to make it really slouchy. It'll have a little bit of slouch to it, but not a whole lot. So there you go. And that's it for that. Um, did you do anything to gild the lily? I didn't. No. Nothing that's related to anything fibery. Okay. Um, I got some my watercolors that the kids' watercolors oh, I got yeah. for like four dollars on Amazon. They are um, lots of the pans are used up now, so yeah. I did replace those. Oh, I might go into that another day okay. um, and share with people. But after I have a chance to use them more and see how I like them. Okay. And how about you? Um, I haven't purchased anything. Although for my birthday, I got some Etsy money. And so I shall be making an Etsy purchase fairly soon. I want to get some more fiber yes. for my fiber stash. Or you could spend some of my fiber. Just saying. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, if the offer is extended. Um, so if you happen to know a really good uh, fiber dyer, I would really love to hear it. Would you... Uh, let me know either in private message or um, email us at knitworthypodcast at gmail.com or let me know in the um, thread for this uh, podcast on Ravelry because I I know of a couple of dyers that, you know, I can purchase fiber from online, but I don't know very many, and I would love to be introduced to some new people. So if you and, could, and it probably would help if you tell them what kind of fiber you're interested in. Um, I like to spin. I really enjoy spinning BFL. I like Polworth. I love Merino. I there there isn't really anything that I've come across yet that I've been like, ew, I don't like this. Um, as far as a type of fiber, I have. There's one dyer that I did not care for that I give mom the fiber from. Um, it was just, I didn't care for, it was not an easy spin for me. So I gave mom the fiber for that, from from that dyer. But I wouldn't say anything bad about her, um, her shop or anything. Because you didn't have a hard time spinning it mm -hmm. at all. It was great. It was. So, there you go. Um, so, I would love to hear from you guys what you enjoy where you enjoy buying your fiber from so yes. good idea well are we really at the end of knitting content we are okay i'm gonna do a little teaser before we say goodbye to our people who just would like to hear about the fiber talk mm -hmm. the teaser is that in the next segment we are going to have the lovely gabriella who is gabby knits uh-huh and we are unveiling a new aspect to interacting with Brianne and Linda on a new venue. And it's really fun, it's pretty new, and we've already done one whole of these new things. You have to stay tuned if you want what to hear is more. It? What is it? So thanks for joining us. Yes, thank you so much. Come back again next time and we'll talk more about fiber and other silly stuff. <laughs> and, if, and we'd love it if you stay tuned for part two, which is all the bonus content. Yeah, contest. Yeah, lots of fun stuff. Yeah. But until next time, thanks for joining us. Hello and welcome back to the additional content. Like it's like it's kind of like an Easter egg on a movie, except it's really not. It's just a part of the podcast. Or you don't have to find it. It's just here. <laughs> or is it like parfait with many layers? <laughs> I'm thinking Shrek. You are thinking <laughs> Shrek. Yeah. That's what it sounded like to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So we are excited about trying something, and you guys will let us know. It'll be your job to let us know what you think about it. But in between the last recording and this recording, mm -hmm. we actually podcasted. We did. And we podcasted kind of with a new uh, social media venue called Periscope. Mm -hmm. And Periscope is basically a like a live video feed that stays up on Periscope for 24 hours. And if you catch it live, 
then you get to comment and chat along with us. And you get to send little hearts and do little cute things. And, and we can ask you questions. And you can answer back. And you can answer back. And you answer back with text. You do. And what's fun about it is it's a more interactive uh, venue than what we're doing right now. And it's not to replace this podcast. Not at all. But we thought it'd be fun maybe on off weeks from time to time. Mm -hmm. if, it, if you're interested that we could do some supplemental material on Periscope and then it would, after we do our live um, event, then it would go to YouTube yes. and you could view it. So if you couldn't be there for the live event, you could, oh, sorry. If you couldn't be there for the live event, then you could watch it on YouTube. And um, what you do is you sign up, you, you look up, Periscope. Mm -hmm. It's probably Periscope.com. In, in your app store. In your app store and try looking it up on Google. You, we signed up under Twitter. You can sign up as Facebook or your email, I believe. Okay. I think there were three choices I heard. And um, basically what that allows you to do is it gives you an account so that and I'm getting whistled at right now. Can you silent that? Because that's a little bit right there. That's, that's my little whistle that I got that says that um, there is someone doing a live broadcast. If you want to do it, you can join in right then. Mm -hmm. And so I think it sounds like fun. I've watched a few. Mm -hmm. And my now my very best friend, Lisa, who is doing <laughs> Creative Lee. She's, uh, I think we talked about her last time, so uh -huh. um, creativelee.com. She does all sorts of creative things, and she's a... Uh, homeschooling mom she's got six six kids yeah wow and she does these periscopes to supplement what she talks about on her blog and she's been showing us how she does creative lettering mm -hmm. and it has been so much fun yeah and it's used for all sorts of things and our thought is it wouldn't be a long podcast like no. we do now but it would be a few minutes to share something fun together yeah i think last time you know it was like seven or eight minutes and uh -huh. we just chatted for a few minutes and uh gabby joined us for uh for a little bit of it and you know it's not um it's not going to replace the podcast by any means but more just kind of supplement things we might you know take you along someplace if we're going someplace mm -hmm. interesting here in branson or you know wherever we might be um you could challenge brianne to eat something i think that would be fun <laughs> Why would you even put that out there? Why not? I think that you should uh, pickle pigs, pickle pigs feet. Come on, I think you that want you to see challenge eat it. mom to different yoga positions? <laughs> well, that's just rude. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's really fun. Uh, I know some of you feel like you're maxed out on your social networking. So if you don't want to do it, that's fine. But we would love it if we get. We had one beautiful guest, the lovely Gabriella. <laughs> Yeah. Is, I only have like three friends on Periscope right now, so I don't have a huge community behind me. But if you care to join us, it could be more than just us and Gabriella next time. I think time. we have like 25 people on Periscope now. Do we? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, so we do have more. Well, um, do you know that I, you know how I do, I bug people. No. And I begged and pleaded and asked Gabriella, will you please tell us, a little bit about yourself because she has been a friend of mine on social networking for a, a long time, uh -huh. socially speaking. Yeah. And she's a great person. And also she was our very first Periscope participant. Yes. And I asked her if she'd share a little bit about herself. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Did you notice how I just like tumbled over yeah. that? Yeah. So you put something in my coffee, didn't you? I did. Huh. So anyways. Uh <laughs> Uh, sh I think we should pause right now and let's let Gabriella tell us about herself and what she thinks about Periscope. Okay. All right. Yes. Let's do it. We'll be right back. Hi, everyone. I'm Gabriella, also um, simply Gabriella on most social media, um, Gabby Nitz on Ravelry. And um, I was asked to do a short video about Periscope and what I like about Periscope and interacting on Periscope. Um, I was on last week with uh, Mama Linda and Brienne when they did their Periscope. And um, one of the things that I love about Periscope is that you can interact um, with the person doing their live broadcast. 
and being able to send a message and have some feedback and write, ask questions and really interact and start to, um, I feel like it builds community in a way that's different than if you're just watching a podcast or watching somebody else's videos on YouTube. Um, it's a much more interactive way and I feel like it bridges a gap that just watching videos on YouTube leaves for me. Um, I don't do much broadcasting of my own, but I do watch a lot of videos on Periscope. I have different people that I follow, people that um, do crafty things or other people who are entrepreneurs and giving tips on how to, you know, maximize your business, things like that. I am in the process of setting up a business myself. I'm trying to narrow down my focus of um, the services I want to offer. I am a certified distance running coach uh, so I can work with people um, in person or virtually to train to run a short distance as a 5k a 3.1 uh, mile race to a marathon a 26.2 mile race or longer um, and I'm looking at what other things I can offer um, my premise is that if we all empower ourselves we're able to get ourselves healthy again um, I have a couple of chronic conditions that I've had to learn to manage over the past 11 years and I'm happy to say I've put myself in remission and I am off all my medications and um, yeah I I'm a crafty person I'm a multi crafter I knit I sew I crochet I uh, do paper craft, I make cards, I stamp, you know, all sorts of things like that. But Periscope is great. It's nice to interact with people during a live broadcast. I encourage you to try it, um, to find your favorites to follow and interact with them and get to know them, make some friends. Um, have a good day, everyone. Thank you so much, Gabriella, for um, telling us more about what you think about Periscope. And you can see why I love her. She's mm -hmm. like into everything, which I am. Yeah. And maybe someday she might convince me to run. I mean, if she can run yeah. with her issues, that's inspiring. Mm -hmm. um, also, I noticed that when Gabriella sent me that clip, she also said that she's trying to reach a fundraising goal to help end cardiovascular disease and stroke. And um, she actually has a family member that has suffered from these things. And uh, so, of course, these issues that are close to our heart, we want to help. I will go ahead and give Brianne the link for this so she can post it on our website. And I will try to remember to put it right here. So if you want to um, learn more about Gab Gabriella and about her interest in helping to end cardiovascular disease or exercise or anything else, you can reach her. And uh, thank you for doing that, Gabby. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. So uh, we will go ahead, whether or not we know someone's there, we're going to go ahead and, and do a periscope. We're going to shoot for next week. Yes. And we just don't know, um, let's put it this way, you don't know where we'll be or what we'll be talking about, but it's going to be, if you can imagine it, more informal than this. No Who editing. Knew? <laughs> no editing, just us live. That's right. Could be scary. I'm a little scared already. A little scared. <laughs> but I think it'll be fun. That's right. Okay. Yes. So that was fun. Yeah. Um, we have a contest to talk about, and we I have do. some arty things. So what would you I've like to do first? I've talked so much. Let's do contest okay. stuff. What's going on in the world of Knitworthy Contest? The world of Knitworthy Contest. Okay. There's a song for it. Well, it's a very informal song. I could have done an interpretive dance for it. Oh, you man. missed out. If only I had known. Um, so we have our Hopeful Holidays contest. It's a very informal contest. It's hardly even a contest. It's more like a giveaway. Because um, you just have to talk about it, right? Pretty much. <laughs> just chit chat. Not, not a whole lot required of you. Just talk like you normally would. And I already gave you a paper clip, clip craft. So, That's right. I mean, really, you could make something and talk about it. That's right. Um, so this is the Hopeful Holidays uh, giveaway that we're doing and uh, in October, November, and December we're just going to get away from doing anything that requires uh, 
a lot of pressure on you to get things done. You already have enough pressure in your lives. Yes. You have enough going on with trying to get ready for the holidays and, you know, all of the things that go along with this time of year. Um, whether they be really happy or really stressful or, you know, difficult, we don't want to add anything to your plate. So um, to enter this contest, all you need to do is tell us about what you're hoping to do this holiday season, what you hope to receive as a gift, what traditions you'd like my to start. Is, my list is this long. Yeah, you always have a big list. She's so easy to shop for for that reason. <laughs> Unlike my dad who's From like, a dollar to, uh, you know, not a million, but, you know, at least to $100. That's, Come on. that's right. I have she'd a lot like, of choices. She'd like the $900 thing or, you know, the $1 pen. Exactly. Um... So basically, we just anything that you want to to talk about uh, in this thread of what you're hoping for for this holiday season. We've had people say, you know, I hope that I can get along with my family. Oh, that's a good one. We've had people yeah. say, you know, I'm hoping to get yarn. We've had people say, you know, I'm hoping to start um, a tradition, you know, where we celebrate, the, you know, with the advent calendar. And, you know, I'm just going to start planning that now. So we've had a lot of different mm -hmm. people respond. Um, I'm half of the responses in there because I'm responding to people. Uh -huh. But those count. Now, I can't win, obviously. But, I, you know, I'm trying to get conversation starting because any kind of response in that thread is eligible for a prize. And you don't just have to post something you're doing. You could ask someone a question. And Absolutely. that would count. Absolutely. You could... Uh, you could comment on how much you like someone's idea. Absolutely. That would be fine too. That or totally counts. How about something that you see that someone else is doing that you think is great? Right. Mm -hmm. Like you could say, Brianne, you know, I really like that lipstick that you're wearing. I'd I like do. to give it to someone for a, for a gift. Where did you buy it? And I could tell you. That would totally count. Yeah. Yes, because this is a no pressure contest. No pressure. I decided after listening to our, our intro from last time, I yeah. sound like a used car salesman all the time. <laughs> What? <laughs> I think I missed my calling. Hello and welcome to the Really Podcast. Or you would be really great, like a like a TV game show announcer. <gasps> game show announcer. Yeah. yeah. Everything's overly dramatic. What a shock. <laughs> we wonder where Brienne gets it from. <laughs> And her children. What? And I married the most conservative husband on the planet of the earth. He looks at me sometimes and goes, hmm. <laughs> and Isaac. Isaac. Or Isaac. Yeah. <laughs> That's my son who's in high school. He heard me talking to the kids. I probably shouldn't share what it was about, but he comes walking in afterwards going, Mom, that was highly inappropriate. I think you're a bad influence on the kids. <laughs> <laughs> this is from the 16-year-old. Uh -huh. Yes, I am a bad influence. <laughs> um, the prize for this contest giveaway that we're doing is uh, these beautiful skeins of yarn from Lorna's Laces. This is Shepherd Sock, uh, which is an 80% super washable, 20% nylon in the Andersonville colorway. Lovely fall colors with a bit of that gray blue sky we get in fall sometimes. Yes. It's so lovely. And it's really just a beautiful colorway, really uh, very soft. And Lorna's Laces if you are someone who likes to have socks where you know you can just start from the toe up and just go and you don't want to have to think about you know am i using too much yarn this is a great uh solution for you because it's already in two that is great you know you just wind it up into two balls of yarn mm -hmm. you don't worry about running out no not at all and um for every hundred posts that we get, then I will add another prize. So if we get up above a hundred, then I will add a second prize in and who knows, I may win everything, but I can't. But it would be fun, so huh? please interact with us on this. It's uh -huh. super easy, super simple. Um, you know, I mean, you don't have to bare your soul to us or anything. That's not what we're looking for, you know, for you to, you know, necessarily like, you know, embarrass yourself on the internet. Or, um, or you don't have to be super profound. No, not at all. I just mean, be like, me like chocolate. That's right. Really caveman speak. It'd be great. Yeah. Like, you know, I could 
give a hint to my husband and say, I really want, you know, some Babs Yowza Weta Skein or Miss Babs Yowza Weta Skein. So get me a gift certificate and then take a screenshot of it and send it to him. And then he'll know that that's what I want for Christmas. That's a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's great. So there you go. That's our contest that we're doing right now. And uh, it'll end on January 1st of 2016. And then we will uh, be selecting our winners by random number generator. So it doesn't matter what you post, you know. I mean, it's not like the best post wins. So there you go. No pressure. That's fun. No pressure. That's what we were all about. No pressure. That's right. So I've uh, been busy, of course, with some new things. Mm -hmm. Do you have anything else that you would like to share that's new stuff for you? Do you, did you have anything going on this week that you wanted to share that's chit chatty? Um, You had a birthday. I did have a birthday. I did. Um, It was a good birthday. The only thing is, you know, Owen was not interested in my birthday one bit. That's my... It's not just you. 12-year-old son. (laughs) I did not take it personally at all. He's just... He's... um, He has high-functioning autism, and he's very focused on certain things right now, and it's really hard to break him away, and we're having to be a little bit more strict about, you know, what... Mm -hmm. How much time he's being allowed to... Mm -hmm do those things because um you know we want to kind of rein in a little bit um he really doesn't understand what mom's birthday has to do with him yes he's not interested in it and that's the autism yeah that's the autism it's not him being mean he really honestly doesn't understand no why would he do that when he's got fun stuff to do upstairs yeah and uh you know we had his uh his iep meeting it's an individual educational plan um and so we had his IEP meeting for this year uh-huh. the, uh, on Wednesday. And I mentioned, you know, that because part of his individual education plan is learning how to socialize with people. And so, you know, I brought up this fact that, you know, he, it was my birthday and he was not a part of it at all except for dinner, which was interesting to him. Um, Food. Mm-hmm. Cake. Yeah, he was not interested in the cake. So That's he, true. He, he didn't, didn't even cake. he didn't even have cake or ice cream. Huh. Wasn't there for present opening. That's focus. Yes, and but I was so excited because his special ed teacher said, "Oh, he told me it was your birthday on Friday." Wow. And I was like, "Really? That's awesome!" Yeah, because he was awesome. not interested one bit in it when he got home. <laughs> I did get a hug though. That's meaningful. That was very meaningful. So, well, on that day, Brienne, I was trying to to get Brienne some time to do something she wanted to do, Mm -hmm. and so I was going to watch the kids, and then um, she wasn't able to connect with the person she wanted to connect with, so I volunteered. What pressure! (laughs) What a what a sacrifice I made to go spend some time with her and Isaac watch the kids. Yes. So she wanted to go to Ulta, which is a makeup store. It is like. Um, if you like staples for office supplies or you like uh, going to Michael's for all the craft supplies. Mm -hmm. If you like Sam's Club for food. If you like Sam's Club for food, Ulta is the wonderland of makeup. Yes. (laughs) And I, you know, it's like I don't usually do a lot of makeup, but I was totally sucked in because it's like all these beautiful colors and I thought my face is like a canvas I could paint my face it was so fun but what I realized today or a few days ago I went and grabbed my shoes that I wore because I you know I go barefoot around the house you know I'm kind of hillbilly like that (laughs) and I went to grab the shoes I had worn to Ulta and realized I had worn a black shoe and a brown shoe luckily they're similar styles so they're slightly interchangeable in that way, but still. Nothing like going into a high fashion environment in stretchy pants and one shoe black and one shoe brown. <laughs> that did not, however, detract from the fact that she was able to get a job offer from one of the employees because she was totally selling this lady on like all these different things, you know, and, and it was really awesome. I you was were- just excited about them. And so she said, do you, where do you work? I go, 
I don't know what I don't know what to say. What do I do? I have no idea what to call. I should give myself a title. You're an artist. I love you. Yeah. So anyway, I said I no, I don't work. And she goes, You should work here. You do so good. And I'm like, Really? Me and makeup I didn't see together, but it was really super fun. Yeah. And I'm gonna go back and get eyebrows. Yeah. Because I am losing mine and they are all gray. And you know, you don't look like a normal person without eyebrows. I drew some on today. Almost used magic marker because I couldn't Don't find my strip, my you know eyebrow sticks. So yeah. later you may see me with Joan Crawford eyebrows. Don't say anything. <laughs> it means I've been to Ulta and went to their brow counter. <laughs> <laughs> okay, was there any other um, chit chatty things that meant something that you think they might be interested in? Um, Does that basically cover it, or you know that covers the things? There were so Good many stuff. things. There were a lot of fun things last night at dinner. <laughs> we had a little mishap. What happens when a little girl is so sincere and sweet, and she's describing her favorite Pokemon, and uses an expletive to say how wonderful that Pokemon is with a sweet, innocent face, and everybody goes. And her, <gasps> and her little high voice is just like this. She had no idea. Yes. And it was like instantly, Dad goes, what did I hear? Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't think she meant it. She no. doesn't know. And she didn't, and she was so horrified. Yeah. And you could just tell from the look on her face, she wasn't sure whether to continue going on or whether to just break out into tears. She was just, she had, really had no clue. She thought, it, she thought she was just using an expression to say how good something was. Right. And so it was, it was very sweet and took me, I told Brianna, took me right back to junior high school. Yeah. Where I was in choir, the church choir, getting ready to go out for <laughs> singing Easter music. Uh-huh. And someone that was one of my friends in the choir had said she wasn't going to be there and had used an expletive to tell me why. I, as a naive junior high schooler, had no idea what that word meant and uh -huh. of course blurted it all out when they asked where she was. I blurted it out to the whole choir. Just repeated it back verbatim. Verbatim. And the whole choir gasped and looked at me and we had to immediately walk out and sing the Easter music. And I just wanted to cry. I felt Aww. so horrible. So I was right there with her. I totally got. She had no clue. Yeah. It was sweet. Yeah. Do we have time? Are we going long? I've lost track of how much time we've spent. We're, we're going a little bit long. Okay. So yeah. you want me to save my stuff for later? Well, why don't you show one thing? Okay. Can you pick, can you pick one thing? Yes, of course. Okay. So, um... My thing I'm most proud of, I'm going to show two things just because when she gives me one thing, I have to always go beyond what she expects. That's why I give her one thing because I know that she's going to go beyond. It's like when I tell my grandmother that we're leaving in, in 15 minutes when we really are leaving in 30 because I know she's going to take 30 to get exactly. ready. Exactly. But she thinks she only takes 15. Uh -huh. It's the exactly. same thing. Exactly. Same thing. It's mental things, <laughs> people. This week I played around more with my lettering and made this fun. I think it's fun. Um, this is a scripture that's a, a favorite of mine where God says he'll take us by the hand and keep us. Mm -hmm. I love that idea of him holding our hands. Yeah. And I did the artwork around here. I'm proud of that. I like how it, it turned, turned out. turned out so good, Mom. So that was very fun. So I'm having fun with my lettering class. It's not too late to join. Yeah. Um, your, your mic is way down. <laughs> it's not. It's migrated. My scarf has a tendency to do that. There you go. So it's not too late to join if you um, are, are wanting to join in and learn how to love your lettering. It's super easy. The lessons are probably maybe 10 minutes uh, whenever she posts one. It mm -hmm. doesn't take long. So I encourage you. I'll put it right here. <laughs> Get your leash out of the way. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll put it here. Um, the creative lettering, it's free mm -hmm. and super fun. And so, of course, I've also been determined I'm going to learn how to do faces better in drawing okay and so I've been watching people um, this one lady she spends like three or four three hours so many um, several times I've seen her do it for three hours she works on a picture Dee Dee is her name she's I found her on YouTube and she does her portraits from beginning to end other art too and so you really get a chance to see how people do things yeah so I did my grandson Aww. Now, I'm going to show it here, but at the end of the podcast, I'm going to post the picture, his picture next to it. So you can see, I got vaguely close, but I'm so proud. It looks like a real human. 
It does look like a real Doesn't human. It? It's not like E.T. or anything. Right? So I was very happy to like make something that looked like something it was very happy for me. Yeah. So that's kind of where I've been. Um, I have some more fun things that I want to share but I'll save it for next time okay it's for all of you who enjoying journaling or enjoy writing with fun utensils or people who are loving paper crafts okay so there's lots to look forward to there's always more content than time that's the truth I mean unless you want like a three-hour podcast <laughs> and then we're good right <laughs> And if you have never stayed past our goodbye, we always include as many pictures as we can find of what we've been doing. Uh -huh. And we also share um, a favorite scripture for the day that's just a little boost to give you some encouragement. Yes. And so I hope you'll all stay tuned and watch some of that stuff and give us some feedback. Let us know what you think. Yeah. Are I think we that's, ready? I think that's it. Okay. All it's right. It. Well, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate you being here with us today and just spending some time with us. And, you know, we just, we love, we have so much fun doing this. It is fun. And we love being um, being with you guys. And, um, you know what? Thanks for coming. Yes, and we're Thanks looking for forward to interacting with you more. We are in lots of different ways. Different ways. Uh, so until we are able to see you next time, we want you to remember that... You are knitworthy. Bye. Bye, y'all. Okay, show me.